Hello, everybody. Are we live now? Yep. Okay. We're using this different program that my husband loves, and I've never been able to figure out. So <laughs> hopefully it goes okay. I actually have a microphone, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Uh, go ahead and let me know you're here. So, oh, you're going to have to pause that probably. Okay. So I have my husband on. Most of you know him, Pastor Tommy McMurtry. I always enjoy having him on. The reason I wanted to kind of do this is I've been thinking about it for a little bit. I see comments everywhere, um, mainly Twitter. I feel like there's more Twitter wars over this kind of stuff than Facebook wars. But I mainly see like Twitter wars. Why are you guys even IFB still? You know, come to the dark side of trendyisms or whatever. You know, you know, there's so many scandals in the IFB, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of wanted to have a show tonight kind of addressing some of this stuff and basically explaining why we are IFB and why we believe it is the best way, you know, to raise our family, why we are staying IFB, you know, um, just along those lines. So you've been IFB. I pretty much been IFB my whole life too, mm. but you have roots in IFB. So you want to explain a little bit of your background, even where your dad comes from, your, you know, your mm. family, just your roots in IFB. Yeah. So Sandra asked me about the subject, and I like the idea of it because I thought about doing something along these lines just because I do. I get a lot of comments from people in the Twitter world uh, about it. You know, the IFB is always getting attacked by somebody. And, you know, some things that people bring up against the IFB are sometimes legit. You know, there's some bad people that uh, and some bad things happen in the IFB. And so people, but there, and there's also some, a lot of junk that's associated with the IFB that's really common. And so people will ask me, especially when I call out some of that stuff, you know, why are you even still IFB? And there's a lot of reasons for it. And so I thought this would be a, a good way to cover it. But um, my dad, um, of course, I was raised IFB, but not long before I was born, he was a Southern Baptist, you know, there in the late 70s when he had surrendered to preach. And I don't remember which year he was ordained. But, um, you know, by the time I was born and old enough to know what was going on, we were, we were IFB, but, um, you know, the Southern Baptists had gotten really liberal. A lot of crazy stuff was going on there. And there was kind of a big exodus from that into the IFB world. And so there, a lot of that junk that they left, you know, there was a, there was a lot of reasons for it and they saw something better in the IFB world. And, you know, now uh, you know, my dad's generation is, you know, pulling their hair out, wondering why, you know, my generation is going back to what they left mm -hmm. because uh, it's not pretty. And honestly, I'll just say right now, what I see going on, what people are leaving the IFB for is not something I'm interested in at all. And so most of the people that ask me that question, you know, why are you still IFB are people who are pursuing uh, things that are absolutely I'm not interested in at all. And so I've not seen these people get better when they leave the IFB. So I wrote down several reasons why I'm still IFB. So you want to start going over those? Yeah, let's start going over those. Okay. And we'll take questions too. If you have questions. Yeah. I have uh, the chat. I'm in the chat. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try to answer some of those as we go. But the first thing I put down is that I do think that IFB churches are the closest thing to what I see in the Bible. I, I don't see another movement out there that's closer. And so I get it. There's a lot of different religions and there's a lot and there's, you know, I'm sure there's probably that exception out there. You know, you might find that Bible church that is really good on a lot of stuff. And, and that's very possible. But the thing is, most you know, non-denom churches you go to or churches that are not Baptist or that are not IFB are not anything I'd want to have anything to do with. So when I'm looking at, you know, uh, well, you, you know a movement or, you know, a large group of people, because uh, I don't want to just put a generic name on our church, too. I want people to have a rough idea of what they're getting into. And um, I think what we do, how we practice, what we believe fits closest to the IFB. I think most people, obviously, you know, we have exceptions, but, you know, most people, if they're looking for an IFB church, that type, you know, ours is the one that they're going to like out of all the churches in town. And so um, if I see another group out there doing better, you know, 
I'll follow them. But I've not seen anything that has even come close or has even really challenged me to, you know, be better. I guess you could say that's not mm -hmm. Baptist. Would you consider IFB a movement then? For sure. It's, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, Are movements necessarily bad? No, not necessarily. I mean, obviously, they're never perfect. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, I can get, you know, real pompous here and talk about the only movement that I'm interested in is the one that started, you know, <laughs> with Jesus and his 12 disciples at the Great Commission. And obviously, we all feel like we're a part of that, you know. Um, but I'm getting it, into Baptist brighter stuff. Yeah, but you know, I, yeah, I'm not a Baptist writer, but again, there, uh, one thing that I've done too is I, I recognize things that are IFB culture, mm -hmm. and I've tried to do a good job, and I don't know if I've succeeded in um, distinguishing IFB culture, you know, versus sound Bible doctrine, and mm -hmm. some things that we do in the IFB, uh, I do believe are cultural, you know, I, Give I some examples. So just as far as how we dress, um, in the IFB, yeah. you know, I don't believe the apostle Paul wore a suit and tie. <laughs> um, I don't think he preached exactly what he did. I'll bet their pulpits didn't look like we did. I know Ezra stood on a pulpit of wood, but I never even see a pulpit of wood mentioned in the new Testament. Why would they need pulpits when they didn't have notes or well, I think the pulpit of wood that he stood on was just basically like what we would call today a platform. You know, right. Something to just elevate him so people, some, could, so see people him. could see him. Uh, you know, I, that's what I think it's talking about. You know, we use that word, but it's probably a little different today. But um, at the same time, uh, you know, their buildings didn't look like ours. And, you know, in IFB church buildings, the look changes over time. You can go in some, I've, I've been in some churches, and you can tell it was built in the 70s as a Southern Baptist church. Yeah. There's just a distinct look. You know, it was like they built them all that way. And, you know, they still have the wood paneling on the walls and a lot of them and everything. And, you know, it, it's it's got a distinct look. Now, churches that are, you know, built today or have been remodeled, you know, they kind of have a typical look in the IFB world. And, you know, and I try to copy that because we are an IFB church. The people that we identify with tend to, you know, do things this way. While you have, you know, the purple light churches, and I can't find a verse against purple lights in the Bible. <laughs> but I notice that certain music, certain dress, certain doctrines, certain Bibles all seem to come with certain decorations. I don't want to even look like I'm a part of that. And, and so... Um, those are cultural things. They're not biblical things. So I do like the IFB culture. I like dressing up for church. I like the suits and ties. I like mm -hmm. the clean cut look. Uh, you know, I like all those things. You know, I like the style of preaching. Um, I'm sure, I don't think the Apostle Paul had a Southern accent. Uh, <laughs> I, I really don't. And um, I, I kind of doubt he ran laps in church. No. But uh, at the same time, you know, there's certain, you know, things in the IFB that we do, kind of how we run our services and stuff, the way we shout, whatever, that it's, it, it's cultural, and I like it. And I'm not, what I'm seeing from the NIV churches, the non-denom churches, I think is very effeminate a lot of times. I think it's very worldly. I think it, it's, I, I don't believe it honors God. And so I, uh, I stay away from that. So, um, again, if I see another group out there that is preaching better than IFB and maybe they've got a little different look, I might start looking like them. But I'm, I'm just not seeing it. So if I'm going to, obviously, and again, you might find that individual church out somewhere that there that's an exception. But if I'm looking for a church that's the closest to representing what I see in the Bible, it's in the IFB world and I can't find any movement out there that I feel is doing better. Can we touch area. on just the different aspects of IFB because we've got all these, there are different camps within the IFB. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So what would you consider our church? Okay. You've got Ruckmanite IFB. Mm -hmm. You've got the Southern camp style mm -hmm. of IFB. 
you've got Northern IFB, which is what I would consider us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you've got old IFB, you've got new IFB. You know, what kind of, what would you kind of consider our church? Yeah, so we're kind of, you know, we're a mystery. You know, we're kind of a, of a mixture we're of a, a lot conundrum. of, yeah, of a lot of different things. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I, and the thing is, I don't necessarily mind identifying with a group to a certain extent because, you know, I want to be clear about who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, um, you can you can go a little far with some of that stuff. Yeah, but, Royer asked, what is IFB and NIFB? So, yeah, IFB is Independent Fundamental Baptist. NIFB is New Independent Fundamental Baptist. And and the new IFB term, I was just talking to a pastor the other day that I know, and he'd never even heard that term before. And... Uh, a lot of people associate it with the new independent Baptist based that's based on an article that Josh Tice wrote right uh, a long time ago and I am so far away from that group it's not even funny it's like trendy yeah trendy and, IFB and are do they consider themselves IFB even most of them no okay no I, I yeah I mean I'm kind of surprised he's still Baptist I think I think Josh Tice would drop the name Baptist tomorrow I didn't if it wasn't for all just the you know legal pain in the neck it would be to change the name for everything mm -hmm. but uh but anyway um yeah i hate when people mistake those two things it makes me very upset but um i don't i i don't want to use the term new ifb just because of the fact that it's too specific and what i mean by that is in the new ifb there's not really any room for you know variation and uh and a lot of that's because of the internet presence that it has, all these people that are on the internet, that they do not allow variation. And if you do vary, people take it really personal. So, you know, I preach something that's a little different than the new IFB, and then I'm attacking the new IFB. And it's like, I'm not trying to attack the new IFB. I just don't believe like them on that stuff, you know. And when uh, I've had people in the new IFB that's gotten upset because of certain sermon clips I've shared, that's not what the new IFB stands for, but it's like, but it's what my church stands for. And so the thing is, when you say new IFB, you can't vary if you, without, you know, it seeming like you're attacking people. And, you know, and people can be different than me in areas, and I'm fine with disagreeing on that. I can still like them. I can still fellowship with them. But the fact that it's perceived as an attack all the time it just shows that this is way too close knit and a little too denominational for me. Where in the IFB, it's big enough, it's broad enough. Where, um, you know, if you say IFB, you're not just going to get automatically associated with the Sam Gibb or right. you know, or some of the crazies that are out there. You know, they're not you, Peter you know, Ruckman. Yeah, it's it's real easy to distance yourself from certain people. If you say IFB, because people understand in the IFB, there's a lot of different camps. And, mm -hmm. you know, so while there's certain things that they expect, you know, they expect to be King James only. You know, they expect a lot of, you know, the, obviously the Baptist distinctives, you know, hard preaching, soul winning, things like that. Uh, people aren't just going to automatically assume they know everything about you, where if it's new IFB, then it's kind of a it's kind of a different story. And so, um I, in fact, I heard Pastor Anderson saying one time, and I, I liked what he'd said, how uh, you know, if you're too, I don't remember how I worded it exactly, but he was too talking exclusive. about if, if, if you're too exclusive, what ends up happening, you get radicalized, and you kind of become inbred, mm -hmm. and then you just go crazy radical on certain things, and you know, it's good to have a little variety, you know, in genetics. You don't want to be too closely related, and I'm the same way with fellowship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just be, I don't want to just fellowship with people that are exactly like me because I don't want to be inbred. I don't want to be a freak. You know, I don't want to be uh, radicalized, all that kind of stuff. And so um, I do not want to use the new IB label. Uh, I really don't want that attached to me because there's so many people in the online world that all of a sudden now feel like they kind of have some ownership and then kind of harass you and harass your friends too you know so then if i'm if i have somebody come preach for me that's not in the club stirs up stuff everybody's investigating them harassing them and and that and i'm not exaggerating it's really bad when it comes to that stuff that doesn't happen 
you know, when you just claim IFB, unless you get too involved in certain camps. And, and understand. It can happen in certain Yeah, camps. if you get, uh, you know, certain camps within, in, within the old IFB, um, they want to own you. And they do the same thing. People you know, are people. Yeah. They don't change no matter what. Yeah, they which do. The, group they do this, and they they've done it bad to <laughs> me, and it you know irritates the fire out of me, and so that's why you know, but at the it, at the same time, you know nobody really in the old IFB has cha- will challenge the fact that I am IFB, you know where in the new IFB people want to cry and whine about that all the time. And it's just like you know you can have that label. Um, I'm not, you know. Just like I'm not against all IFB churches, I'm not, I'm not against new IFB churches, but um, I don't want to, you know, give up any of our autonomy, mm-hmm. and I don't want, uh, and I also don't want to be like causing wars and problems because I'm different in some areas, and it is really weird the way, you know, somebody can preach something that the new IFB doesn't like. And then there's going to be like 14 messages preached against it. And it's like, really? You know, that's kind of weird. And it's easy to get caught up in that. You know, I've been caught up in it before. But it's like, uh, yeah, you kind of want to distance yourself from that kind of stuff. So I do not want to use the term new IFB. We do not have that on any of our material. Uh, we don't have it anywhere in our church. You know, in the phone book, we're independent fundamental Baptists. You that's, never have liked that I, term, I, though. Yeah. and Even from the beginning. And that's because of my old IFB roots, too, because new is right. a bad word. You right. know? But I understand what yeah. they mean when they say new. Hashtag old past. Yeah. I, I, you know, I get it. New generation, all that kind of stuff. You know, there's there's all kinds of ways you can spin it, you know, that's where it's fine. But, but either way, I don't want to get too, you know... I'm not, I'm not trying to stir things up in the IFB or new IFB. And so uh, I try, you know, so I, I just, I'm sticking with the IFB label because it's gives you a good idea of what you're in for, but it's not so specific where, you know, everybody's going to just associate me with one person and think I, you know, have all these identical beliefs. And then, you know, preachers are going to get bent out of shape if I, you know, believe somebody get, can get saved by a gospel track you know i right. mean that's pretty weird when that causes controversy and it's it's super weird and so it's like well man if that's what y'all want then you know you can you know kick me out of that or whatever you know but uh i'm not into pretending so if someone's never heard the term ifb though to you i mean it's it means independent fundamental mm-hmm. baptist if you're new to this term ifb just shortens it um, our church, what does that mean to our church? What will that identify us as if you came to visit? Right. Well, yeah, so, um, so yes. Now, the way I'm answering this question, I'm not answering it as in what does independent fundamental mean? Because obviously we know independent, it means, you know, we don't, we're not in a denomination. We don't, mm-hmm. you know, we are an uh, autonomous church, okay? Uh, and, you know, fundamental you know, we believe in the fundamentals of the faith and not just the five fundamentals of 1910. You know, mm-hmm. we've got, there's specific fundamental, uh, we, we, we believe there's more than that. Uh, but, um, so, I guess the things that you would notice, mm-hmm. all right, that, that people would notice, somebody who is not familiar with religion, who is not familiar with the different terms, the things that are going to stand out to them. If you go into an IFB church, so think because the, the first thing people notice usually isn't the doctrine, you know. So the things that you're going to notice, which are many of these things cultural, is you know you're going to notice the conservative dress. Um, you know, guys dress like you know we dress like guys, girls dress like girls, and a lot of people don't like that, you know, and because uh, we have a very gender neutral society, and as IFB. Especially if you embrace the old paths, you know, we don't just go along with the culture. And um, we're still stuck in a time era where men and women look different. And we, uh, we still believe that men are to be the head of the household. And, you know, wives are the keeper of the home. And they're in subjection to their husband. We still believe all that stuff. These are not politically correct truths. But, and even in a lot of churches that aren't IFB, they often give lip service to those things. But they're also apologetic about it. And I hate nothing more than listening to a preacher get up and with an effeminate voice apologize for 10 minutes 
before he preaches the truth of the Bible that's controversial. <laughs> we just are going to get up and say it. You know, you, women shut up, listen to your husband. You know, <laughs> you guys stop dressing like a bunch of queers and, you know, be a man. You know, we're we're going to say those things. And that's part of the IFB culture. We're very straightforward. And it's caused a lot of problems in the last several years because of the Internet. You know, right. uh, in the IFB world, you know, We've always been that way, just straightforward, to the point, in your face, don't care about your feelings, none of that you know, stuff. And, you know, that's just how it is. People expect that. And you know what? The thing, too, people, when they get, you know, I see these trendies on the IFB sermon clips just crying when they hear these IFB preachers get up there and they're just ripping on people. And it's like you people do not understand that church and the dynamic there. That preacher can talk the way he does to those people because those people know that preacher loves him. Right. They know that preacher. Now, I don't think you sh- you know, you're not going to get away with just preaching like that right out of the gate. You know, when I started the church, I didn't just, you know, right away start throwing out the insults and all that kind of thing. You still don't very much. Well, no. But <laughs> at the same time, if I do, I can get away with it because part of it, too, you know, you, you say, you, sometimes we say these things. Is just a way of getting attention, even being funny. But even if we're serious, people understand it. You know, the the people in my church, they know me. Mm-hmm. I know them. They know I love them. I know that they love me. And I can get up and I can be controversial. I can be real blunt. I can be straightforward and to the point. And they're not going to get offended right. because they know I care about them. That's why a parent can literally go wear out the behind of their child (laughs) and the child doesn't think mom and dad hates them you know they they know that they love them and so they get away with that kind of thing and so when you have actually loved people um you get away with a lot of stuff and that's what people don't realize you know now that these sermons are being live streamed and everything they don't understand the relationship Mm -hmm. that's there so i can see why it looks bad to the outside world you know, I, I could totally see that, but understand nobody in that auditorium is getting offended the way people on the internet are. And so, um, a lot of IFB have not figured out that, Hey, this stuff's going on the internet. You might want to be aware of how it's going to look out there. Mm-hmm. And then you've got other people in the IFB. They're a little too aware that it's going out on the internet and they're, you know, soft stepping everything Mm -hmm. and they're not specific. They're not offensive. And it's like, you know, I personally, you know, I just don't care if I stir things up, you know, if I get the trendies mad at me or if everybody thinks I'm the most hateful, unloving preacher in the world on IP sermon clips. um, I just think it's funny because the people that I was actually talking to don't feel that way at all. No, I got the message across to them. And so, I don't know, you know, may, maybe we should think a little more about that stuff with it going on out online, but I'm still more in that, I have the mindset of pre-live stream. Mm-hmm. I still have a pre-live stream mindset, and that's how most people in the old IFB are. You know, they, they're not even thinking about the fact it's going on on the internet. They don't even pay attention to it until they start getting in trouble. Yeah, and, and I wish when you guys in the IFB get in trouble for saying something, man, don't back down. Don't get off the internet. Just stay on there. Just you know, keep doing it. Stir things up. Uh, these people get mad at you. It's going to help people like me find you and find more good people. And I'm thankful for all the good preachers that IFB Sermon Clips has introduced me to that <laughs> I've become friends with and that I like now. And, you know, people are going to find your church because of that, too. Because, you know, if, if you want to switch to the effeminate, you know, soft-spoken, non-offensive thing, you're going to be competing with a lot of churches in your town. But if you are just going to let her rip and preach the truth, there's a lot of people looking for that too, and you need to let them know you're there. So let these people be free advertisement for you. You know, and that's a good lesson I learned from the new IFB is, you know, they they don't care about that stuff. You mm-hmm. know, they don't mind stirring things up, and they don't get bent out. They don't, they don't run if they offend some people online or if people take their preaching wrong, they see it all as free advertisement. And so, um, you know, I think it's been, I think it's been good for them. And if, you know, if you're looking for a hard preaching church, uh, in an area, you know, people that are looking for their type of church, 
they're going to find them. But there's a lot of people looking for your kind of church, but they're not going to find you mm -hmm. because uh, you're not doing anything to get out there. And this younger generation, they're not looking up the church directories in the sword of the Lord. They're not looking in phone books. They're not looking right. at newspaper ads. They're not listening to the radio commercials that you're doing. You know what they're using? They're using the internet. Mm -hmm. That's how they're finding these things. And you should get yourself on there and take advantage of it. So Let's talk about um, scandals. We've had this question done. We've, we've both seen our share mm -hmm. of scandals. Oh, yeah. Um, thankfully, at your dad's church, mm -hmm. never been a scandal. Mm -hmm. Never been a scandal here. Hopefully, Lord willing, there never will be. Um, why don't we walk away from it when there are scandals that happen in the IFE world? Well, I would, in a heartbeat, if there was something better. But, again, there, there isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, Phil Kidd, uh, he took, you know, he dropped the name Baptist because of all the scandals and things. Right. And, and a lot of the reasons that he brought up for dropping the name Baptist I mean, it's like, man, I'm, I'm kind of with you right there. Mm -hmm. The problem is I don't like the direction he's going. I don't think what he's doing is better, you know, than, you know, the vast majority of IFV. And you got to understand, too, uh, when it comes to scandals, a lot of the ones that we talk about, um, you know, are many times, I mean, and, and there's, there's exceptions everywhere. But, you know, um, a lot of it's in these huge churches you know, big name, and anywhere you have people, you're going to have problems, you know. Um, so I don't have a huge problem with, like, a scandal as far as immorality. It's the cover-ups that's the cover -ups, bad. yeah. And the cover-ups, um, that is completely wrong. And you know what? There's a lot of Baptists calling that out, you know. Um, these people that are out there acting like nobody's calling it out in the IFB, well, the big names aren't okay the big names aren't calling it out you know pastor big shot with his bible college he's not going to call it out because he, he's going to have you know he's too connected politically he's going to offend one of the pastors that sends students to his church and there's going to be a big problem you know it's, he's going to lose students as a result and so um the people who have the big conferences they don't call these things up but we've got to stop looking at these ifb popes uh, we've got to stop looking to these big figures of these mega churches. They are not reality. They do not represent a majority of the IFB. Right. A majority of the IFB is smaller churches. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking churches less than 100 people. Mm -hmm. That's a majority of the IFB. You know, and a majority of it don't have any scandals. So, you know, if we're going to start talking about scandals, you know, well, I wonder what would happen if we, you know, took out the mega churches and we didn't include them in there. Or even if we. Uh, moved it down to churches less than 500, mm. you know, and then better. Yeah, I mean, the average, I guess they say, is like 70, 80 people. Right. You just look at the average one, and you only look at it there. Well, then it's things are going to change a lot. And so, um, you know, I, just because of bad press and things like that, it doesn't change the fact that a majority of the IFB – is doing things right, that stuff's not going on. And even when it happens, at least, you know, it's somewhere where it was preached against. Now, obviously, some of them were hypocrites when they preach it, but it doesn't change the fact it's still true. And so, uh, you know, people love it when a guy who preaches hard against perverts turns out to be a pervert. You know, they, they love that, and it gets a ton of attention. But, you know, the, those same things are happening in the trendy churches, too. I was just going to say, we it, just found out this last month about... Yeah. A couple scandals oh, yeah. that came to light. Yeah, it, it, it happens in the trendy churches too. But you don't get as much pleasure, you know, if you're if you're an immoral person, you know, if you're a queer and some, you know, effeminate, soft-spoken, you know, you you can't really tell what a sexual orientation is. Stop you know, saying if, that. You're gonna get me a strike. Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I think you can say sexual orientation. But, okay. You know, uh -huh. If he gets up, and you know, he gets nailed in a scandal. There's nothing satisfying about that. But it is satisfying when a guy's getting up there and he's preaching against adultery, he's preaching against fornication, he's preaching against you right. know what, and all those things. When, when, and when they get nailed, that's just going to get more attention every time. But it's happening over there, too. Well, because people hate hypocrites. Yeah, 
Yeah, they hate exactly. it when someone's up there that hardcore against something, and then they're doing it in their private right. life. Right. And it happens more, too, even with those churches, in these big, huge organizations. Um, and I don't, I just don't believe a lot of these ministries, these big churches, the way they function, these extra ministries they have, where they have people at the church pretty much you know, every day of the week, around the clock, you're just greatly increasing opportunities for things to happen. But mm-hmm. when you're doing just like the, the basic things that the Bible talks about doing, you don't have a whole lot of opportunity. For that kind of stuff, so um, I don't know if this person's serious or not. It's probably just a troll, but uh, what does it say? Robert Robinson must be nice. If your child comes out and is gay, what would you do? I'd be devastated. I don't know what, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. I mean, I'd be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> so, are we supposed to throw a party? Yeah, Rejoice? I, I mean, mean, that's a stupid question. Yeah, I boy, you know, what would you do if a, you found a, out what, your kid was a murderer? Yeah, what a downer. I hope you would be devastated if you found out your kid was but, a murderer. But yeah, you know. So, uh, yeah, I don't even know. What, I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, you know, why don't we talk about more potential tragedies and bad things that could happen? What, what if your puppy dog got ran over? You know, <laughs> you're gonna replace it. You're gonna. I mean, you're gonna bury. It? Uh, you know, just that, that's that's a terrible question, and uh, I don't really want to talk about weird hypotheticals like that. Yeah. But lost my train of thought. We were just talking about scandals oh, yeah, and then so, why people want, you know, they say, why do you stick around? Right. Why do you identify yourself as IFB? But here's the thing. It's like you said, it's happening to Trendy. It's happening in the Catholic churches. Right. Well, and the thing is, here's, you know? here's a wonderful thing, too, about IFB. Okay. Here's another example of a difference between when you're IFB versus versus new IFB is because the IFB, you know, there is quite a bit of variation there. It's super easy to just distance yourself from one pastor in the IFB. So if some guy turns out to be a dirtbag, you know, you just call him out, denounce it, you know, everybody's mm-hmm. happy, nobody associates you with, with it. Right. You know, but the thing is, like, in the new IFB, um, it's like people expect, like, this package deal, you know, and it's like, you know, we should be able to fellowship or not fellowship with who we want to fellowship with. And when... Um, and it's like, you know, you, you should be able to just get away from one guy. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, it's like, you know, you can't, you know, with, with that crowd. They, if you have any connection at all, you know, people are just accusing you of, you know, trying to split the movement, you know, infiltrate. Oh, you're, just, you're just trying to stay friends with Pastor Anderson while not liking us too. Well, what if... I like one pastor and I don't like another pastor. Mm -hmm. That's not that weird of a thing because there's some people in the IFB I like and some that I don't like. I was going to say, you've always been that way though. Right. And there's even in the, you know, in the IFB world, you gravitate more towards some pastors while you leave other ones alone. Right. You know, you're not friend. I mean, you're friendly to them, but you're not friends with them. You're not close to them. Right. And there's variations. This is another thing people need to understand too. There's, there's all kinds of different levels of fellowship. Right. I guess you could say, too. So, um, you know, there's people that I like a lot, but maybe we have some pretty big, big disagreements. So I'll still be a personal friend with that person, but I might not have them come preach for me. Right. But I might be a friend of them on social media. Mm-hmm. I might like a post of theirs. You know, I might retweet them or something like that. And it shouldn't be an incident. No, but, but, that means your blood over yeah, others. But yeah, it's like your your blood brothers at that point. <laughs> no, I just because sometimes too, you know, I've got a lot of pastors in my family. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'm related to them, mm-hmm. or sometimes too, when you know you've been in the Baptist world your whole life, you know, maybe there's somebody too who kind of went off in another direction, but you know, you still have, you still love them, you still care about them. So, um, but yeah, again, I wouldn't have them. Come, I wouldn't have them come preach for me. There's mm-hmm. other preachers that are out there that I'm sure are fantastic. I don't know, but I don't know them. Mm-hmm. I've not been around them. I, I've not had a chance to get to know them. And so I would go, I might go to a meeting where they're preaching and there might be things I don't know about them. There's other people on paper are also great, but I know them too well. You know, it's like I know too much about that person. And so I wouldn't fellowship with them. Because I just know too much, but I don't get mad at somebody else who fellowships with them. Because on paper they're really good, but 
they just don't know him like I do. And so just because I fellowship with you doesn't mean I endorse everything about you. Just because I don't fellowship with you doesn't mean I hate you. you know, but What for, would people say, though, when they say you fellowship with someone, you're their friend, you're a compromiser? Well, I would be compromising if I had if I had sworn allegiance to your rules of fellowship. And then <laughs> when I when I got pressure or I like somebody, then I changed my mind on that. But the problem is I can't compromise on your standards when I they're not my standards mm -hmm. and they never were my standards. So you can call it compromise all you want, but I never I never got up in my church and swore to never fellowship with certain people. I've never got up and said I will never fellowship with anyone who believes this. You right. said that. Yeah. You said that. And apparently because I'm friends with you, I'm now expected to follow all your rules and if I don't, I'm a compromiser. You know, and and the thing is too, there's some people that I know who you know are not where I would want them to be, but maybe they're coming this direction. And so, I want right. to be friends, I want to help. Right. There's other people who are maybe closer to me, but they're going another direction. You know, and, and some people you're just not compatible with. Right. You know, some people you're just going to have a personality clash with. Mm -hmm. And people get so caught up in the politics. And this is it's probably like it's this another across groups. the board. Yeah, but in the IFB, this is so bad. Yeah. And it drives me nuts. And um, I just, I refuse to, um, I refuse to just go along with other people's rules. Yeah. And, um, I will go preach at a meeting if the pastor asks me, even if I know it's going to tweet people and stir things up. Now, sometimes I have to warn people, you know, I have to warn them, Hey, if you know, I would look, I would, I would gladly come do this. But you got to understand. I got some freaks that follow me that, you know, you might, they're going to investigate you, you know, and, and a lot of preachers, they don't want any drama. They just don't want drama. They don't yeah. want to be on anyone's radar. Yeah, they don't want to be, yeah, they don't want to be on anybody's radar. <laughs> they just want to live their life right. in their little town. I've heard it often. I remember one of my friend's husbands said he wasn't interested in the online world because he was just going to focus on his town. Mm -hmm. You know, just focus on his church, just focus on his town. Yeah, and I don't, I don't agree with that. Right. But, you know, who am I to just tell this pastor, change your plans and follow my model? Right. You know, I, I can't, I can't do that. And. It's just, it is kind of an IFB thing. If you disagree with somebody, you hate them. And I've never bought into that. I And, and I think a lot of this, too, is just because um, I, I've gotten, you know, I really like to get to know people. And I just, I don't know, there's something in me that kind of makes me love my brother. And, and I don't know so, what that could be. Yeah, I, and so uh, I just have a hard time just hating somebody because of, a little variation in doctrine, practice, or whatever, uh, but but there is there is a great deal of that because again, a lot of the big names, the popes, um, they do they they'll they'll come after you if you if they see you fellowshipping with somebody you don't because and I get it, man. I hate what's going on with the trendies. I hate seeing these guys go trendy. But do we really want them to continue being IFB if they don't even believe it? Obviously, I don't want them going that direction. But do we want them being hypocrites? Obviously, we never, we never want them over. Obviously, we didn't teach them right. If they're if they're able to fall for that, you know, everybody's talking about the recovering fundamentalists. Yeah. I'm sorry. These guys. The show that they're doing. Their next show. I think they're releasing tomorrow. I saw somebody shared it. Mm -hmm. It's basically on alcohol. You know, these guys. They're endorsing it. Yes. These guys. I'm sure they are. Uh, you know, they. Oh, you don't know. You haven't listened to it yet. Well, I'm 99.9% .9 <laughs> sure it's going to be in favor of alcohol. Right. Okay. Uh, now, I mean, listen, if, if you're following, if, if, if our people are falling for that, it's very clear that we failed in teaching somewhere. We failed in communicating some things. And you know what we should do? Instead of just bashing the recovering rejects, and listen, nobody enjoys bashing them more than me. All right? I enjoy it a lot. But... You know, we should finish. look inward and say, all right, you know, where do we go wrong? Not in our doctor, not are we wrong about alcohol. We're not wrong about alcohol, but obviously we either, maybe we didn't do a good job teaching it, or maybe too, we did a good job teaching it, but maybe we just didn't get the hearts of the people. Maybe, maybe our people don't love the Lord. 
the way they should? What can we do to inspire a love for the Lord and to inspire people to want to actually live a holy and a godly separated life? I mean, to me, when you look at the life of uh, those who, you know, have been involved in alcohol and those who have not, there's no contest. So how are they how are they winning people over in this area? You know, don't you think, though, this kind of goes back to even even somewhat the way we were raised? And in the 70s, the Jack Howells era. He's mm-hmm. kind of the one that started, right, IFB. Because, well, they broke off. J. Frank from, Norris. J. Frank Norris. J. But they yeah. broke off from the Southern Baptist Convention. And that's kind of where it was birthed. A lot of it was just do what I'm telling you and not enough mm-hmm. explanation from the Bible. Right. Yeah. And then some of the things with us growing up, there was no biblical explanation. Mm-hmm. It was just, well, just do it because I said so. Right. So you've always tried to kind of change that with your preaching. Yes. And that, and a lot of that, too, like one thing I disagree with in the IFB culture is um, in, in the IFB culture, the old IFB culture, they have, you know, like your Christian schools, your Bible colleges. They've got all these other programs mm-hmm. in the church that we don't necessarily see in the Bible. Right. And they kind of use those as the enforcement mechanisms for their beliefs. Yes. Yeah. And, and I get it. If you're going to have a Christian school, you know, you need to have some dress standards. You know, if you're going to have a Bible college, you're going to have to have a handbook. You know, you're going to you're going to have to have some of these things. But at the end of the day, these aren't necessarily things that, um, you know, the Bible called for. So we got to understand we might get some unintended side effects from these things. And so the thing is, you know, we shouldn't be being these clothing police and you know, all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. you know, raising people's adult, uh, you know, adult kids and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, the, so all, I, I do, I think these things are like unintended consequences. And so when you focus on, uh, the right thing, like our church, we don't have a lot of those things. So I don't have anything I can hold over people's head. Nope. I have, I have nothing I can just take away from people if they don't follow my rules. So you know what that means? If I want people to be IFB, if I want them to dress IFB and and do all these things we're known for, I'm going to have to actually get them to want to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to show them what the Bible says. Uh, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to get them to fall in love with the Lord. And you don't have to do that when you can kick them out of their school to where they're going to be forced to homeschool or go to the public school. You don't have to do that. You can bypass all that. And so it, it got really easy for a lot of these churches to just do as I say. And uh, the problem is they raised up a generation that didn't know how to teach the Bible. And, um, you know, they ended up losing, they're, they're losing a lot of my generation. So, um, in fact, too, and this kind of, I guess it'd be a good segue into the next point, but um, the uh, IFB culture. One of the reasons I'm I'm IFB is I like what they turn out when it comes to families mm. and uh, not just not just kids. Okay, adults. Adults. I want to raise good kids, but more importantly, I want to raise good adults. They're going to be out of my house longer than they're in my house, and that's a good point. And even though my kids are going to leave my house, I'm still going to care very much about what they do. Yeah. Um, I really w- I really want my kids to continue being IFB. I don't want them to be a homo like, you know, Robert Robertson has <laughs> meant. I, I, I don't want that. But guess what? We live in America. They can do whatever they want. So if I'm going to, so, I, you know, these 20 years or whatever, I've got them in the house. I'm prepping them to send them out and to hopefully continue what I'm doing. So uh, what group is doing a good job of getting that done? Now, there's massive failures in this area, you know, in the IFB world too, you know, especially if you look at, if you look at the big names in in the IFB, but uh, I've never looked to the big names. My dad, he never taught me to look to to the big names and my dad always paid special attention to pastors who turned out good families. Who and he be, respected yeah, them and talked them up to you. And, right. Yeah. And those are the guys he'd have come in and preach. Yep. 
and those are the guys he talked to because he was he wanted to see what they were doing. And my dad liked a lot of the big names too, but he also saw how they didn't always turn out the best kids. And yeah. so you know he he respected them, he appreciated what they'd done, he liked them. But when it came to raising kids, he wasn't going to listen to their sermon series on that. Mm-hmm. And so um, there are, while there's a lot of failures we could talk about, and a lot of the IFB is losing their kids to the trendies, um, there's a lot of, uh, and I'm not going to name people on here because a lot of them would probably be embarrassed if I named them, but there's, there's a lot of people that I've been watching for a very long time in the IFB that has produced we saw one of some, them last yeah, week some fantastic you know who I'm thinking yeah, yeah some fantastic families mm-hmm. and uh, and we've been watching these people for a long time and uh, you know th- they're the ones that we're following mm-hmm. you know that we're, we're you know we pay attention to when it comes to you know how to raise our kids and you know how, how to parent uh, it's their sermons that we're going to go listen to. I'm not going to listen to some of their sermons on end times and things no. like that. Cause, you know, I, I, I can, I can prove from the Bible where they're off on that. Right. But at the same time, when it comes to, um, these people are producing what I'm wanting to produce. And so mm-hmm. I, I watch them closely. Now I can't think of another movement in the world that is producing the kind of families that I want to, I want to produce. I, I can promise you the trendies aren't getting it done. No. I, I can promise you that. I, I, I Don't you think the trendies is still too young of a thing, though? No, because... Are, have, have they even... Yeah, they, they've been around, and kids? people going that direction have been around for a while. And a lot of... And, here, and the thing with the trendies, too, a lot of them go that direction when their kids get older. Because anybody can be hardcore when their kids are little. Yeah. You know, when you when your kids are all yeah, when your kids are all not even teenagers yet, you know It's easy to get little kids. It is so easy. It's so easy. But what you're seeing is these people, they were all hardcore IFB while their kids were younger, and then when their kids became teenagers, all of a sudden they became trendies. And why is that? Because, you know, they they got challenged. Right. You know, and um, you know, they're way of life everything it's now affecting kids who can tend to be very emotional who know how to argue and who have a will and, of their own and yeah and who are really <laughs> good at pointing out inconsistencies and things right so um a lot of people end up going trendy once they their kids hit the teenage years because um a lot of people in the ifb are just kind of following the rules and they don't have the spirit. They don't know why they're doing it, and and I think that's an important thing too. Is just really get to the get to the heart of things, the spirit of things. And so, when you see those people who've done it right and have done well, um, you know, you it's not it's not usually hard to figure out Mm-mm. what they did. It's uh, especially if you've been around them for a long time. And so, um, I think I think the biggest thing is the heart thing. They yeah. weren't putting a show on. They were consistent in church, at home. They were the same person all the time, mm-hmm. and their kids saw that. And it they believed it with their heart. It wasn't an act. Right. You know, it wasn't just a paycheck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They actually literally believed everything that they preached and taught. Right. And yeah. that's what that's the difference we've seen. Yeah, and, and there is, too. If you, uh, I've, I've been around the IFB long enough. I've seen the people who turn out the good ones and the people who turn out the bad ones. And I could definitely point out some differences. I, I can definitely, you know, tell you some clear distinctions that I see uh, between the people. And so, um, you know, I've been watching that for a long time. Now, you know, I got to be careful talking because, you know, we are entering, mm-hmm. we're entering that stage of life where um, we're going to get our report card yeah. before long on things. And so... Um, you know, there's nothing more scary than getting that report card and seeing, seeing what you got, you know, and, um, anybody can talk like they've got an A, but at the end of the day, you're going to get a report card eventually. And once your kids become adults, Mm -hmm. you're getting your report card. You're going to find out how you did. And, um, man, it's, uh, it's a scary thing. So, you know, I, I would not recommend people talk to me too much just yet, you know, I'm, I'm not going to put myself out there as any authority on this. I'm just telling you, though, what I've been shooting for and 
what I've been watching. And so that's why, uh, because I care very much about what happens with my kids, I'm staying IFB because I'm not seeing people turn out a better, happier, you know, more godly group than the IFB. Mm -hmm. You just, I, I can't find it. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm sticking with that. Mm -hmm. What's your next point? Um, so, yeah, it's, and so I guess, kind of along with that, something I have in my notes here, but, you know, IFB culture, too, when it comes to why I'm still that, is because um, we were talking about doing a doing one on dating pretty soon, uh, which I like to call IFB dating or prison dating, <laughs> is what I like to call it. And, and I believe in prison dating. I, I you know, I, I, I think IFB dating is one of the uh, worst things in the world to go through and deal with but i think it's a good thing for a lot of reasons we'll probably talk about that someday but you know the ifb culture is what i know it's it's what i grew up in it's it's what i'm familiar with and you know there's other groups out there and even uh maybe even other wings of the ifb that might not be that bad but i want to stay with what's proven and that's what it seems like with the trendies they're always just trying to try some new thing, you know, just any, any guy can come along and just some young dude can just write an article on something and then everybody goes along with it. And it's like, well, shouldn't we watch, see what they produce first? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I don't think everything that trendies do is bad. I think most of it is. I think and a the, lot of times their gospel is correct, too. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes. It's definitely, it, it, see, there. it's hard because it's by grace through faith, but then they, they go the opposite, like they turn that grace into lasciviousness. Yeah. I've heard some preach the gospel very well, and others have mm -hmm. preached a more of a lordship salvation than anybody really? I've ever, trendies? oh yeah, trendies. Some trendies I don't listen are, to their preaching, so yeah, I wouldn't some know. Some of them are horrible <laughs> on that, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, I guess the things that I've seen, and, and I know it's not perfect, but there's a proven product, I guess. When it comes to the IFB culture, uh, there's a proven product there that has, you know, turned out some, you know, really good things and really good people. And so uh, if you want to try something new, you know, I mean, that's fine. I hope it works out. But, you know, forgive me if I let you prove it <laughs> before. You know, I really don't want to gamble my kids. Yeah. On something that hasn't been tested and proven. Kind of like, you know, you know. Yeah. You, you want to see what happens to everybody else, right? The jab. <laughs> yeah. Why, what is it about us that we like the autonomy of our bodies? We like the autonomy of our churches. There's just something in us that really likes uh, that. People say I have bees control freaks. Maybe that's the same. We want control of ourselves. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so, but then I, you know, I guess uh, the other thing, too, about the IFB that I like that draws me to the IFB is their enemies. And, um, mm. you know, never thought of that. That draws me to the IFB. I get very nervous mm. about what, you know, if certain people like me, I, I'm nervous about that, you know? And, um, I think you can tell a lot. You know, people say all the time you can tell a lot about somebody who their friends are. I think you can tell even more about who, by who their enemies are. And you know, I said the trendies, they're getting along with people we shouldn't be getting along with, you yeah. know, and uh, the IFB, they're, uh, they're, they get a lot of attacks by, you know, by a lot of really bad people. And yeah. it's like, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't think it's a good thing when we line up with the news media. I think they're super wicked. Amen. So the fact that the news media is always reporting negatively against an IFB, it just kind of draws me to them. And one of the things that's drawn me to... If they're reporting against them because of stands they take, not because of scandals. Right, yeah. yeah the scandals... <laughs> Let us yeah, clarify that. Right, yeah. So, um, so, so, for example, a lot of people who um, I've gotten to know and have been drawn to, it's been when they were getting attacked in the news media. You know, that's, right. And that's, you know, a lot of the preachers in the new IFB. I saw the attacks that they were getting from really bad people. And it's like, man, I, I support these people. You know, if these people hate them, I probably like them. And, and it's the same thing, too, with a lot of people in the old IFB. 
who are getting attacked by the trendies all the time. When I see on, on Twitter all these trendies and just, I mean, super carnal, wicked people mm -hmm. just piling on certain preachers, I'm drawn to them. And some of them, too, I mean, I've got, you know, I might have major disagreements with them, but I get really upset when I see people. I don't like seeing anyone lie about anybody. No, yeah, you I know? agree. And, you know, I mean, we, we shouldn't even bring a railing accusation against the devil. Right. You know, and so when I see people constantly making railing accusations mm -hmm. against certain people within the IFB, I just kind of want to stick up for them. Yeah. And uh, that's how I've probably made most, a, a good chunk of my friends in the IFB has been from sticking up for people who are being unfairly attacked. And most of my enemies. Yep. Are because yeah, of people I've stuck up for <laughs> that have, I've thought have been unfairly attacked. I mean, so there, there's something about. I'm uh, the same way, babe. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, maybe I watched too many superhero movies growing up, and if I see somebody getting beat up, I want to go to the rescue. <laughs> but when I see good people getting attacked, you like justice. It yeah. gets me fired up, and um, I get in trouble all the time on Twitter for sticking up for people that I wasn't supposed to stick up for. Yeah. And um, I've gotten in major trouble in the old IFB with that, for that. I've gotten in trouble with the new IFB for that. And I just, I do not like seeing unjust attacks. It really, it really bothers me. And um, why do people have I, a I problem? I get more trouble with that than anything. You do. And why do people have a problem with you, with being people that are truly independent, do you think? Uh, well, I, I think the reason a lot of people have a problem with that in the IFB is yeah. because um, they they know, I, if, if most people in the IFB were honest and had to take a lie detector, they would have to admit a lot of what they do, a lot of what they preach is political. Mm, yeah. Because I'm sorry, I just, I don't believe that you <laughs> believe, truly believe just certain doctrines. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I... Some of this eschatology stuff, folks, I mean, I get it, man. You will get run through the ringer if you change on it. Yeah. But, folks, there's no way you still believe this stuff. I'm sorry. If you're still preaching some of the things you're preaching about Israel, I think you're scared of the IFB. Well, you've seen what happens yeah. when you deviate. Yeah, and I, and I get why you're scared. We've gone through it. <laughs> yeah, I, I get why you're scared. I had to get I had to get over that, too. Yeah. But um, and even just some of the, you know, some of the practices, too. Um, even things. I, it, let me just say this too. I'm not against altar calls. I, I'm not. I'm not against it. I have a huge problem with the fact that people get so mad at you if you don't do it. But listen, when you're getting up doing an altar call after doing, you know, for every single service when the, the message doesn't even call for it, you're doing it because you're scared of your preacher buddies. Yeah. And I have seen people do altar calls in the most weirdest times at the most weirdest subjects sorry you, you preach a message about against gay marriage <laughs> why do you need to have an altar call after that I mean, is that a problem in your church you know if somebody's struggling in that area do you really think they're going to want to go forward you know in that situation but yet you have to do that <laughs> you funny. you have to, you have to do it and i'm not mad at you if you do it especially if you want to do it but i don't think that's why you're doing it I think there's a lot of stuff. I think some of y'all want to have some music in your church hmm. that I Probably. wouldn't have. Yeah. I, I, I think some of you all have some music in your church because, you know, if you did some more of that more Southern gospel stuff, you're going to get some people mad at you. Or I think some of you, I think some of you want to do some more contemporary stuff. I think you like it. I think you listen to it all the time. And I think you do it in a heartbeat if you wouldn't get in trouble politically. Now, I'm glad you're not doing CCM music in your church. I hate that stuff. All right? I'll get bent out of shape if you do it. But you know what? I don't pastor your church. Yeah. And I hate that you're a phony. You know? I think some of y'all are using a King James Bible because you're scared to get rid of it. I don't want you to get rid of your King James Bible. But I hate that you're a phony about it. And so, um, you know, just you need to be real. Otherwise, you're, if you're going to be fake, if you're going to be a hypocrite, People in your church are going to figure it out, and they're going to keep, they're going to go they're going to become recovering fundamentalists. I don't want to see that movement grow. Yeah. But if we're going to continue having preachers being fake and just doing things for political reasons, then that's going to keep happening. So what you know what needs to happen is you know preachers need to get back to fond leading of the Holy Spirit. They need to do what they 
believe needs to be done and stop just giving in to peer pressure and everything. And I am, I'm thankful for the peer pressure. That's another reason I'm not just going to call myself some generic name mm-hmm. because I want, I want some of that accountability, accountability from the IFB. Uh, I, I do want that. Uh, I don't want them controlling me, but I'm to the point and I, I, I've been here for a long time and I, you know, and I guess I've, I've been able to prove this to myself that um, I can fellowship with whoever I want and be true to what I believe. I, I'm, I'm not influenced by that stuff anymore. I, I don't ever, I don't feel like I'm doing anything in my church for political reasons anymore. Now, I've been there before, but I, I don't feel like there's anything I preach for political reasons. I think I've proved to myself, I think I've proved my church that whatever we do, even if it's not right, at least it's by conviction. And um, there isn't anybody else running our church calling the shots. And and I think because of that, we have a fantastic spirit in our church. Mm-hmm. You know, the Lord is really blessing our church. And I think every pastor would love to have that. I think every pastor would love to be able to have the music that he wants to have mm-hmm. and to be able to preach the doctrines that he really believes and what he and what he wants to preach. But unfortunately, you're always letting somebody else tell you what you want. And if it's not the old Paz IFB crowd, if it's not the new IFB crowd, it's the trendies. And you need to figure out, you know, what you believe and what and, you know, what I truly from the heart believe and stand for. Uh, the closest thing to it is in the IFB. And so I'm going to keep I'm going to keep using that label. And I will always tick off some people because, you know, I've. I've got my areas where I'm unique, but, um, you know, I, I'm not going to compromise in these things. And so I will continue fellowshipping with people. And some people, are, you know, there's a lot of good people that don't want to fellowship with me. And it's probably because they are, they're afraid they might compromise. You know, they might feel that changing an eschatology would be a big compromise. And they might be afraid that I would put pressure on them mm-hmm. in that area. And, and maybe I would. Um, so... If they don't want to fellowship with me, that's fine. Uh, there's other people out there who do not agree with me on that, but they also know I'm not going to influence them on that. They're confident in what they enough in what they believe that they can still be my friend, even though we we disagree in that area. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't have to be friends with everybody that calls <coughs> themselves Baptists. And you know the trendies get real mad because they think we should all just hold hands and sing kumbaya and mm-hmm. you know do trust falls with each other. But at the same time, you know. Th- you know, I don't even think all the Baptists have to necessarily get along. You know, I don't know if we should be you know, dropping nukes on each other all the time, <laughs> but you know, we can. I don't get along with Brooke Meyer. Yeah, when yeah. Baptist. Except Brooke Tard, but. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's touch on. I know we're almost. We've been mm-hmm. over an hour, but let's touch on man worship. Man worship going back to Hiles seems to be an issue for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But this is what I've noticed, and we were just talking about this the other day. That's why I wrote that Facebook post. Man worship, if you are a man worshiper, your man worship never goes away no matter which group you're with. You leave the old IFB and you go trendy, mm-hmm. you just worship another man. Right. And, yeah. you know, that's why you should just avoid man worship together. Just don't man worship. Yeah. Well, I think I think one of the reasons preachers do this so bad is, uh, and I, I didn't go to Bible college, so... I can't speak. I probably really shouldn't speak for this, so I'm, I'm going off. Um, I'm going off what I've been told. Mm-hmm. But um, I've been told that certain Bible colleges in the past have always kind of taught their people, the pa- pastors, to kind of be somewhat separate from their people. And um, of the past, what's that? Like yeah, seventies. Yeah, and you know where you're. You know, you got like the pastor and you got the laity. You know, and um, laity. Yes, yeah, the laity, the, the regular people. I've never yeah, heard yeah, that. Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> like it, the layman. Yes, laity. Right. Interesting. So, um, w- if you do that, what's going to end up happening is everybody wants a community of people who are like them. So the problem is, if you get too separated from your people, then you know you're kind of alone in your church. Mm-hmm. And and now and trust me, I love getting around other pastors. 
I, I do. I, I, lo I love getting, I love going to pastors fellowships. Uh, I wish I got invited to more of these things. You know, I, I like going to it. I, I enjoy it greatly. But at the same time, um, I don't have to have that because I've got a good connection with the people in our church. I feel like we're working together in our church in a lot of areas. I can talk doctrine with people in our church and have an intelligent conversation. Most pastors, if they're, if they're going to have a deep conversation about doctrine, they got to talk with other pastors. Mm -hmm. It's like they can't talk with people in their church, but I can in our church. And so they're... Um, you know, so having that close relationship has helped a lot where, um, you know, in, in a lot of these churches, they've they've gotten really tight with these, you know, fellowships of preachers and things. And they really need that. I mean, it's, you know, to where it's like they have to have it. And the problem is once you get a fellowship started, a group, you know, a movement with a name, whatever people are going to try to control you. And at some point, you're going to lose yourself. At some point, you're going to lose your autonomy. And it's it's not a good thing, but people, they, they need, you know, we all need that community. We all need that fellowship. And I just think we should be able to find it within our church first. And I, I do. I think pastors should have other pastor friends. And trust me, I do. But I also think um, we shouldn't be dependent on that. I think God gave us a local church mm -hmm. for that. And, and, um, I think that's one of the things that's hurt a lot of people is they've uh, they've gotten a little too separated from their people, and so they've gotten in with these preacher groups, but then those preacher groups have taken over their church, and you can't let that happen. You you just you lose yourself when that happens. So, mm -hmm. well, if you guys have any questions that aren't weird, go ahead and leave them in the chat. <laughs> just said a troll. Did you have any other points um, that you wanted to go over? I do, I, agree, I do agree with the flip flop. No flip flops. I think flip flops are the dumbest. Can I just go on a rant right now? I'm wearing I, I, flip flops right now. I, I'm not preaching right now. I'm wearing uh, flip flops uh, yeah, right now. And <laughs> my wife, my daughters wear flip flops. <laughs> I think that flip flops are the dumbest thing in the world. I mean, he does make fun of us for wearing them. I, I, I get angry, especially if we go on a hike or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like we're going. On a hike I don't and do that. Flip flops okay, or something. I, like, Chloe what were has, you thinking? Chloe has done that before. And then, or sometimes we'll, you know, we'll do, well, I was like, well, I didn't know, I didn't know we we're going to go on a hike. Well, you knew we were going out in public. Why did you wear flip-flops in public? We're, we're going to be around people. Why don't you wear shoes? I just don't understand it. I know it's not a sin. They're comfortable. But it bothers me. And, um. I don't wear flip-flops at church, so. Yeah. I've, and some of the girls have tried that before, too. <laughs> they have. And, and I will, I, I, I will catch that. That's where I you draw it. the line. Yeah. And the flip flops. Brother Delolo mentioned that uh, he invited me to his church and I turned him down, but it was because I've been gone too much. <laughs> it was it was a sketch. You know, I noticed Chanel was, was bad timing. It was yeah. not personal. Well, Chanel is in the chat too, and her husband was one that you warned. Are you sure you want to become friends with me? Yes, I know. <laughs> I, I had to tell him. I was like, man, you know, if I come preach for you, and it did happen. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and he's gonna come preach for me, and there's gonna be some Fruit Loops out there. Maybe some not water now. Boys. Since you've already kind of. I don't know, man. I, I can't. I just can't get rid of some of these people. But they're gonna just feel like they've gotta, you know, take care. Of... I did not notice you wore flip flops. <laughs> now Sarah. you're picking on our church women. I'm sorry for their flip flops. I'm, I'm She's picking pregnant. On, I'm, I'm picking on the ladies, my own family. Yeah. I just I'm offended by flip flops. I now just... none of the ladies are ever gonna wear flip flops again. <laughs> Weren't we at like a youth conference or something, and the preacher like was yelling at the girls for wearing flip flops? Where were we? And uh, someone was getting on the teen girls for wearing flip flops. I do not remember that. Yes, I do. I, I couldn't have been there because oh, I would have been running a lot. Would... <laughs> I'd have probably jumped in the baptistry. I'd be shouting so hard. <laughs> no, we were somewhere, and he started getting on the girls with flip flops. Hmm. It was at one of these youth conferences we went to. Huh? Yeah, I don't. I don't remember that. Yeah, you would have liked that guy. Andrew Loza said, "Water boys." He doesn't understand that phrase. Yeah, so he's from Germany. A water boy. Is somebody who's like always just trying to carry water for somebody, you know, like maybe a big name or somebody, you know, the water boys. It's like a yes man. Yeah, yeah, just kind it's of a, a yes, yes man. man. They like to, they do the dirty work, you know. They're um, they're like a pawn, you could say too. So it's like me as a pastor, 
I have a reputation. I've got something to lose. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times you you have, you know, somebody out there who doesn't have anything to lose. And so maybe I really hate somebody and I want to call them a cotton-headed ninny muggins, but that would make me look really bad <laughs> okay. if I did that. So um, I'll go get one of my water boys to do that for me. We've seen that happen with the article that the Josh Tice guy oh, yeah. wrote. We yes. saw that happen. So yeah, when Josh Tice wrote the article uh, about the new independent Baptists, if you go and I think it's still out there it's and you can read All the, the comments. comments. I, I found out about it about a month after it came out. Mm-hmm. Somebody, I was talking to a pastor and he told me about it. It was funny because he told me, he th- thought it was Stephen Anderson that wrote it. He's like, some guy out West wrote it. I think you, it was Stephen Anderson. Look, and we were like, and he was telling me what was in it. I was like, I don't think that's Steven Anderson. Yeah. But anyway, and so I went and I looked at that article, and I was, like, reading the comments on it, and a bunch of people rebuking him. I knew a bunch of these guys. Well, you knew a bunch of I, them. I knew a bunch of them. But I, and I also knew that these guys all had a pope, too. And But the pope was nowhere to right, be found. But the pope, he was not leaving yeah, comments. The pope didn't say anything. Well, then I found out later that, you know, certain, the pope and certain, it was literally telling all these they preacher were. boys get on there and let them have it but they did it but they didn't because <laughs> it's like if they say something you know you know these trendies are pretty articulate sometimes and they're good at writing and they you know they're going to take these old past guys who don't even know how to do a tweet to the woodshed so these guys have too much to lose so let's get our water boys you know let's get the guys who can do the dirty work that we don't want to do because we don't want to get our hands dirty you know, it's it's the hit men in the mafia. You know, yeah. the big guy's not going to go shoot the guy. He's going to send one of his underlings out there. Someone said, so. I'd gladly be a water boy for any new life free church. Well, if I ever need one, I'll let you know. <laughs> if, I, if I'm if i ever too weak and lame <laughs> to where I can't say what needs to be said myself because I'm so scared, I'll call you up and I'll let you be my water boy. And, uh... And then I'll go turn. I'll also turn in my man card while I'm at it. So your man card. Yeah. They also said flip flops are sus, so they agree with you. Do you know what sus means? Kids told me, but I forgot. It's a new term, though. What is it? Like sus- suspect, suspicious. That doesn't make sense. Sus. It's just a short. I think it's stupid. It's from that game Among Us or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, thanks, Ultra. Cool. These two are a team. Go TM. That's CM, another thing about IFB. <laughs> uh, in the IFB culture, I think every preacher like has some kind of major hobby horse that he's convinced to make it. He's gonna he's gonna figure out how to make it a biblical issue. I've been working on making flip flops a biblical issue, but babe, you're gonna no. I'll figure it out one of these days. I'll find something. The Lord will give me that nugget one of these days. I have heard of colleges that have the rule you cannot have open back shoes. On girls, they can wear sandals, but they have to have the back closed in. I think it's a weird rule. I think me. it should at least have a strap on the back. Like I don't have a problem with sandals so much because mm-hmm. those will stay on your stinking feet. That's true. But then like flip flops, it like they flip flop and make a lot of noise and sound weird when you're walking, and it's just I don't know. I just think it's sloppy. It's like what's uh, but yeah, that's that's just my pet peeve. It's just me. I do not hate you if you wear flip flops. So just so everyone knows, I, I do. Now not. you've just made all the church ladies self conscious. <laughs> now they're I never going to want to wear flip flops. I have not noticed the ladies in our church wearing flip flops. I've not no. I do not look at your feet. I promise. I literally did not. Know, <laughs> I, I have not noticed. You don't. You don't notice. I don't even notice like it that. sometimes with my kids. No, you don't. I have noticed before, and then I I get mad at them <laughs> when they do it. So. I agree, Morgan. They are just sandals. And no, then they have to have a strap in the back so they actually stay in your foot and don't make noise when you're walking. Mrs. Amanda said, "Never trust a man in flip flops." Yeah. But I agree, Elian. He did say, "Nah, brother, we're all in this fight together," and that's why I wish everyone could just get along. You know, I don't understand making trivial issues big. It's kind of an IFB thing. It too. is. Why yeah, do you, Why do you guys have to fight so much? Well, because it. Here's why. Okay. In the IFB, um, you know, we do we have the conferences. You have the big names, and and everybody wants to be that guy. Everybody wants to have that movement. Everybody wants to be that pastor that all the preachers go to. 
So the thing is, why you have to, if you're going to get a following, you have to do something to get attention. Uh-huh. Calling somebody else out helps you get a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. But then, too, you know, if everybody's going to, you know, <laughs> if, if I want to start something here in Illinois and all the preachers are, you know, listening to Gomez or something or everybody's going to the Fugate conference or something, which I, you know, Gomez had a conference last week and Fugate had a conference last week, you know, and uh, you've got all these conferences going at the same time. Well, if I need want mine to grow and for me to look good, I got to do something to get them to stop going to Fugates and Gomez. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have to really nail those guys. So I'll find something that I don't like about them and I'll make a huge deal about it. And if you go to their meeting, you're a compromiser and good for nothing and probably not saved and, you know, and then everybody comes my way, right? But and I so, don't like that because it's seeking preeminence then. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm not going to impress anybody if I have a conference and nobody shows up. Yeah. And so if I'm interested in looking good and making a big deal of myself, because, I mean, if I have a conference and i got 100 preachers that come to it, well, who then who are preachers going to uh, go to? For advice, you know, I'm the one that everybody follows. I'm the one everybody listens to. And then, too, when you have a big conference, everybody hopes to get to preach at that. And so, the way you usually get to preach at a conference is, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So, um, you know, if I if I have this big conference, I'm going to have all these guys wanting to preach at that too. So they're going to be inviting me to come preach at their church, and they're really going to, you know, roll out the red carpet for me. I'm probably going to get a big love offering. And it's once again politics. It's politics. It's a money game, and it can get real ugly. It can yeah. get real ugly, and I hate to admit that goes on in the IFB, but that goes on in the new IFB, or not new IFB in the IFB. New IFB. I was reading. IFB. I was reading something. <laughs> yeah. What were, it's, what it, reading? it's it's in every it's in every group. Yeah. Yeah, we can't wait to see you, Dana. But, yeah, you won't be wearing flip-flops in December, so. But I bet she's wearing flip-flops now. I'm from Tennessee. She's probably not wearing <laughs> flip-flops. <laughs> she's probably barefoot. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, Dana? I'm only kidding. <laughs> uh, I, had to, I had to do a southern joke. <laughs> only reprobates wear flip-flops? Okay. No, 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 no not your head. <laughs> You're calling your wife a reprobate. I'm literally wearing flip-flops right now. I, yeah, I, I just don't understand that. I don't understand it. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up. It's been, yeah, we went I don't think time. anybody wants to hear us talk about flip-flops. No, anyway. that's pretty boring. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down below. Do all the good stuff, like, share, all that. I don't know how to turn this off, so all you're right. going to have to do all that. So any final words? No. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>